And I want to believe that the Lord will minister to me as he ministers to you. And it will be a great moment of fellowship as, as, as we do this. And uh, uh, I, I want to believe the Lord will minister to us. The message that I have for us today is uh, staying on course in crisis. Staying on course in crisis. Staying on course. Staying on course um, in crisis. Um, this is because we are going through difficult and challenging times, times that sometimes will call for very specific and special uh, attention that we may not have had to do before. And as we go through, the, through this crisis, and so many other crises that we go through life, because sometimes one thing can overshadow everything else. Um, COVID-19 may be here, but I must be cognizant that there are many of us who may be going through more bigger and greater crises through the journeys of our lives that we are going through. In our businesses, in our families, in our marriages, um, sometimes we might be going through even greater challenges. Some of us in our career lives, we, we, might, we might be challenged in big ways and, 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 and we, th we, we are wondering, um, we, we might even be seeing as if coronavirus is just another small thing because we are going through major and great crises in our lives and previously through these sermons as i've been coming to you live i had defined a crisis as a a time of intense danger or difficulty when critical decisions have to be made so there is either danger or there are either difficulties, there are challenging things that are happening around us. And at those particular moments, we have to make critical decisions. And what I want to share with you today is how can we remain on cause? How can we remain on cause in such times of great danger, in such times of great difficulty, in such times when we have to make very difficult decisions in our lives? Staying on cause is an idiom, it's an idiom that means moving in the correct direction towards the intended destination get a, a good definition that i felt um, would serve our purposes this this afternoon that staying on course is moving in the correct direction that is so there, there are two things here that are key one is that you're moving in the correct direction and towards the intended destination so there's destination. There's a direction and there's a destination. And so what is the context of our, 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 our study this afternoon? The context of our study this afternoon is that for each and every one of us, before and even after a crisis, we are always on a journey. Life, life has been many times been given the image of a journey or a race, but maybe I would like to use a journey um, uh, for, this, for this particular time. That when you're on a journey, there is a starting point there is a destination, there is a place where you are going to. And then more importantly, there is a purpose for the journey. You know, you don't take a journey without a purpose. When I left home this morning to come to church, there was a starting point, my house. There was a destination, house of worship, Kamulu. And there was a purpose to come and share this message that the Lord has laid in my heart. And these three are very important. But there may be other things that we can always discuss and look at later because there are issues of the means by which you get Then between your starting point and your destination, there may arise a crisis in between. And so what I'm saying is, how can we remain on cause? How can we remain in the correct direction? That means we are moving towards a certain dire direction and we don't lose focus because the crisis have a reason on the way and still get to our intended destination. So how can we remain on course during a crisis? How can we remain moving towards the correct direction and towards the intended destination? That is very important for us to think about during these times that we are going through. And not only during these times that we are going through, that whatever crisis that any one of us may be in, it is important for us to ensure that we remain in the right direction and we also get to the right destination. When I'm talking about a cause, I, I, I'm talking about many things. Because 
we, all of us, have different things that we are doing. Some of us are on a journey towards a lifelong investment. You, you, are, you are making arrangements. You want to live in your own home. You want to get into your own uh, 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 place. And you are working on that. That is something. You are on a journey. It's something that you're doing. Some of us are on a career journey. There is, there is a place that we are trying to go to. And we are trying to ensure that we get to. And therefore, we are also on a, on a journey. Other, others are on um, an academic journey. You, you started an academic journey a few months ago. You started an academic journey a few years ago. And you have been moving towards that direction. And the question we are asking ourselves, how can we remain on course? Even when crises arise. Because on every journey, there will be crises. And, 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 and there are different journeys. But one of the journeys that I have taken... And, and I think could illustrate what we are talking about this afternoon is a journey through the waters. I remember one time being in DRC, the Democratic Republic of Congo, and I had to move from um, a place called, um, um, what was the name of this place? It, it has escaped my mind. But I had to move from one place to Goma. Yes, so I was moving to Goma from these other place that I'm forgetting. And we had to use, to do two hours on water. And we had to use a motorboat. And as, as we moved, we got to a point where there was no trail. Yani you, you couldn't see anything on the right water, on the left water, in front water, behind water. And, and you're in the middle of that. But the captain has to be very, very good at ensuring that we remain on the right direction, that we may be able to get to our destination, which was Goma. You are the captain of your life. And your life is like a journey. And many journeys, there are many things that you're doing. Whether it's your spiritual journey, there's a direction, there's a destination. Whether it is your investment journey, there's a direction, there's a destination. Whether it is your academic journey, there's a direction, there is a destination. And what I'm saying is, how do you ensure that you remain on course? How do you ensure that you remain on the correct direction and you also remain on the correct, you get to the correct destination. That is very, very important. But more importantly, during times of crisis, how do you keep going? And how do you ensure that you keep going without losing, losing focus? Without losing focus. And I want to believe that the Lord will help us as we look at, at, at these things. We are going through a, a time of a crisis in different avenues of our lives. We must nevertheless note that the, 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 the clock is still ticking. The clock has not stopped waiting for coronavirus to go and then it will resume. The clock of your life has not stopped waiting for the difficult times that you're going through to, to, to ease and calm down. The clock is still ticking and has not paused to give us time to deal with what is we are going through or whatever issues that we are going through whether it is in your marriage which is also a cause there is a direction there is a destination it is parenting that there is a cause there is a direction there is a destination the clock has not stopped that they may give you and me time to deal with the issues that are arising in our parental journeys to deal with the issues that are arising in our academic journeys to deal with the issues that are arising as we try to invest and make um, things out of the life that we have. The clock is still ticking. It is not stopping. It doesn't stop. Like if I'm moving from uh, uh, my place to town and I get a puncher, a, a tire puncher on the way and I get um, uh, uh, some aging issues with my vehicle, the clock does not stop to wait for me to deal with the puncher and then resume later. No. And that is how our lives are. That the clock will never stop for us to deal with the issues that we go through and then resume and come back, allowing us time to deal with the issues that we have. This therefore means that the journey we are on to our desired destination is still counting as moving on, as moving on. And you don't want to lose direction. You don't want to fail to get there. And there is always a time. And that is the dangerous thing with opportunities. That opportunities can only be seized within a given time. Within a given time. That if you don't seize opportunities within the time frame, 
that is provided for them, there is a possibility of losing those opportunities. But more was, if you are on a journey, you finding your, your direction again may take time. And may, you may find that direction when you are already late and things have gone wrong. The other thing is that you may waste resources when you lose direction. Take, for example, you're going to Kisumu, and then you have driven for hours. And then after driving for hours, you realize you are on, our, on your way to Mobasa. You have wasted, wasted resources. And sometimes this may be caused by a crisis. A response that you're trying to give. Some issues, some challenges that have come into your life. You must remain. I've said two things we will go thinking about as we move on is you must continue in the correct direction and you must continue towards the intended destination. Get to the intended destination. Brethren, the times we are going through are times when I have even had some people saying that um, there is a new, there is a new uh, proverb uh, in, our, um, in, in Kenya. And they are saying that this proverb is after corona because you tell somebody anything we need to do this first thing we'll do after corona we need to discuss this project oh yes we shall discuss it after corona it has become a proverb and everybody is is like mm, after corona but brethren do we need to wait until after corona do we need to wait until after corona to do the things that we need to do do you need to wait until after corona for you to start exploring opportunities to enroll in that college that you have always wanted to enroll do you have to wait until after corona for you to be able to go and get that project that investment that you've always wanted to get you've always wanted to buy this piece of land do you have to wait until after corona the clock is still ticking it has not stopped. Stay on course. Continue. You don't stop. Because the moment you stop, there will be a problem um, uh, towards getting to your destination. As we go through this, I want us to have some reflections on the book of Nehemiah. And the entire book of Nehemiah is such a, a blessing. In chapter 1, Nehemiah receives information of how desolate Jerusalem is and the issues and the problem and the reproach that the people there are going through. In, in, in that same chapter 1, he prays and seeks God about that city. <coughs> in chapter 2, the king sees him looking bad and beaten and all this and asks him what the charge is. And he tells the king, that his, the city that is named after the name of his God or the city where the name of his God as it was then stays is in desolation. And he tells the king, the king asks him what he would want and he tells the king his desire to go and rebuild this city and the walls to remain the way they were and that the people may not be in shame again. Je Nehemiah for the first time gets into a crisis in chapter 2 because when he goes to go and rebuild the city of course he has I'm, I'm moving fast he has asked for letters he has he has gone and he goes to inspect the city from the beginning of the work he gets to a point where he is going at night inspecting the city and i'll be talking about this and then he gets to a point where his animal cannot go under or cannot go through a place where he wants to go through a crisis arises he has to come up with a solution in the same chapter, Tobiah and Sanballat start opposing him. And that too is a crisis that we shall think about. In chapter 3, there is smooth building of the, of the city and everybody is participating in the work and everybody is supporting the work. In chapter 4, a great crisis ensues because Tobiah and Sanballat oppose the work that is being done. They start by ridiculing the Jews who are building the wall and they are that what you are doing, even, even a fox, if it uh, walks over this, it will bring it down. And when they see that this does not work, 
they intensify their threats and their attacks. What does Nehemiah do? He encourages the people to do two things. Number one, fight, and number two, build. And this is not easy. So they are in a crisis. They are in a difficult moment. We are talking about staying on course. So Nehemiah is on a course to build the wall, is on a course to ensure that the wall starts and is dedicated as it, ha it happens in chapter 12. But before that dedication, there is work to be done. There is a journey to be taken, a 52 days journey, full of crises, full of challenges, full of issues. But Nehemiah remains on cause. The only reason why the wall was finished within 52 days is because Nehemiah was able to remain on cause, to remain on the right direction, to remain going towards the right destination, even with the crisis. So they, they intensify um, their attacks and Nehemiah has to make some adjustments. In chapter 5, two things happen. One is a crisis and one is a blessing. A crisis in the opposition of the, of, of the work. And maybe not opposition, but a place where the nobles are oppressing the poor. And they are making the work difficult. And that is a crisis again. At some time, Nehemiah has to call them and rebuke them. But during this time... He also becomes the governor of Jerusalem. Look at it. He came from Jerusalem as the cupbearer of the king. And he came to build on permission. But now he finds himself being the governor. He is now in authority. And at the same time, he has to remain on cause. Because sometimes it's not only crisis that gets us away from the cause. That gets us away from the correct direction or towards the correct destination. Sometimes there could be even blessings that come our way. And when, whenever I teach about Joseph, I talk about remaining sober, having sobriety in greatness. And I always say even in greatness, there's a great need. So Nehemiah, even in his greatness, Nehemiah in his moment of becoming governor, to remain on cause. Yeah? Because some of us have left our course, have left our journeys, simply because we have received blessings. In chapter number six, another crisis arises where Tobias and Sanbarat now conspire more and want to get Nehemiah out of the battle. And I want us to go to chapter six and read a few, a few verses here <coughs> and then get to the word. So Nehemiah chapter six, if you're there with me, Nehemiah chapter six, we will read from verse six. If you've gotten there, Nehemiah chapter 6, from verse 6. So the Bible says, okay, let's, or let, let's read from the beginning. Now when Sanballat and Tobiah the Geshem, and Geshem, the Arab and the rest of our enemies heard that I had built the wall and that there was no breach left in it, although up to that time I had not set up the doors in the gates, Sanballat and Geshem, sent to me saying, come and let us meet together at Hakep Philim in the plain of honor. But they intended to do me harm. And I sent messages to them saying, I am doing a great work and I cannot come down. And I cannot come down. Why should the work stop while I leave it and come down to you? Why should the work stop while I leave it and come down to you? Remaining on cause in times of crisis. Let us jump. I hope you'll get time to read all this to, uh, uh, later. Let us jump all the way uh, to verse 8. Then I sent to him saying, No such things as you say have been done, for you are inventing them of your own might. For they all wanted to frighten us, thinking their hands will drop from the work, and it will not be done. But now, O oh God, strengthen my hands. So this is Nehemiah. He is in a crisis. Tobias and Geshem and Sanbarat are trying to get him from the work that God has called him to do. And he must remain on cause. There are several crises that have, have happened through this journey. And I want us to use these crises and the way they were able to, Nehemiah was able to address them, to be able to understand 
what God is saying to us at such a time as now. Allow me to share three dangers that come upon us when we are on a cause, when we are doing something. You are determined to achieve three dangers that come when a crisis arises. The first danger is getting our attention and efforts diverted. Getting our attention and efforts diverted. Do we need to pay attention to the ensuing crisis? Yes, we need to. But we must not pay attention to a crisis that arises at the expense of the journey or the race that we are in. We, don't, we must not pay attention to the crisis, to the challenges that are coming in our lives at the expense of the journey that we are on. Have, I don't know whether you have ever been doing something and then you stopped paying attention to it and you started paying attention to something else. And by the time you came back, you had lost direction. Or if you are a driver, when I was learning how to drive, there is something that uh, my instructor kept telling me every time. Because every time a vehicle was approaching and I, was, I started paying attention to the approaching vehicle, I started losing direction. I started losing direction. And my instructor would, would, would always tell me, of course in, not in a very smooth way, in a very harsh way, that young man, drive your vehicle. Stop driving other people's vehicles. Why? Because my attention had, would always be diverted whenever I paid undue attention to other vehicles. Did I require to pay attention to the oncoming vehicles? Yes, I needed to pay attention to the oncoming vehicles. But I did not require to pay undue attention to the oncoming vehicles. Are you in a crisis? Pay attention to the crisis, but don't pay undue attention to the crisis. In the book of Nehemiah, he never ignored any crisis. He never ignored any attack that was thrown his way. He never ignored the enemies who arose and tried to bring him down. He never ignored them. But he did not pay attention to them at the expense of the work that God had called him to do. He never gave them undue attention. If they needed a letter to be written, he would write a letter to them, send it to them, and continue working on the wall. What are you going through? What crisis has come into your life? I want to tell you, my brother and my sister, as you pay attention to the crisis that has come into your life, don't lose focus of the assignment that God has called you to do. As we pay attention to this virus, as we pay attention to the fights that are coming up in your village, as you pay attention to the challenges that are coming up, as you try to acquire this investment, as you try to acquire this business, as Pay attention to that crisis, but let that attention not divert you from the work that needs to be done. The work that needs to be done. So that is number one, the, the first danger that comes. The danger number two that comes on us, we are talking about staying on cause in crisis. The second danger that comes in our lives is pressing the pause button pressing the pause button that you are on a journey that there is something that you really intend and want to achieve there is something even before all this corona came up there's a project you had started i want to tell you this crisis need not make you pr press the pause button Don't press the pause button the other day i was watching levered kuchio um preaching um i think in one of the sitam youth services and he talked about the danger of pressing the pause button, of stopping. Because we must keep going. We must keep going no matter what is happening. Like I told you, the clock is still ticking. The clock has not stopped and is not waiting for you. Because sometimes we feel like, because of these things that I'm going through, let me stop first. And then when all these things are over, I will come back to it. Yes, you could come back to it, but you will not find it where you left it. You will not find it where you left it. We must keep going. And I was saying that there is these people are saying we'll do this after Corona. No. 
there are things that you must continue doing. There are journeys that you must continue moving on. Sometimes people will arise and attack you, like Tobiah and Sanbarat would do. Nehemiah, in chapter 6, is telling them, why must the work stop? Why should the work stop while I leave it and come down to you? <coughs> A very good question. And I want you to ask you that question now. Because there is a project you had started. There is an academic journey you had started. There is a family project that you had started. My question for you today is, why must the work stop? Why must the work stop? Like Nehemiah is asking, why must you press the pause button? Why do you want to press the pause button? Please don't press the pause button. There will be life after Corona. There will be life after the challenges you are going through. And that life will not be starting. It is what you are living before that has been moving on. Please don't go to sleep. Please don't go to rest. Keep moving even if challenges are there. Are there challenges in your marriage? Are there challenges at your workplace? Are there challenges in your business? Don't press the pause button, believing that later on you will come up and pick up later. No, you cannot do that. Keep pressing on. Keep pressing on. Danger number three is the worst. Because some people, when they get into a crisis, they quit. This is the worst response that you can give to your cause in time of crisis. Leaving the work because a crisis has a reason is not helpful at all. This is because it spells a death sentence to the journey you are on. And there are people who they quit, start another journey. A crisis arises, they quit, start another journey. A crisis arises, they quit. How many will you start? And by the time they are going to the grave, they have started 101 projects without any being complete. Why? They do not have the energy. They do not have the ability. They do not have the zeal. They, they are unable to continue when a crisis arises. They quit. They stop. If they start a business and a crisis comes up, they stop and run away. If they start a project like Nehemiah, they are building the wall, and Tobiah and Sanbarat arise against them, and run away. You must be stronger than that. This life is not for weaklings. This life is not for people who cannot press on against the opposition of the enemy. No. Marriage, marriages are not for weak people. They need strong people. Businesses are not for weak people. They need strong people. Investments are not for weak people. That because you wanted to buy a plot, and as you went through buying that first plot, something happened, and now you are giving up. No, you cannot quit because a crisis has a reason. You cannot quit. You must press on. You must press on. You must move on. You must keep fighting until you The other day I said there are some people who misinterpret things that are happening in our lives. And they say God is saying, no, when you get into challenges, God is not saying that you stop. When you hit rocks, God is, imagine if Nehemiah was to say, if you see Tobiah and Sanbarat opposing me like this, God does not want me to build this wall. What would have come of that project? So stop things happen in your life. God wants you to stay on course. Right direction, correct destination, uh, predetermined destination. Correct direction, correct direction, and the right destination. That is where God wants us to go, remaining on course. So those are three dangers. Danger number one, getting our attention and efforts diverted.
Danger number two, pressing the pause button. Danger number three, quitting. What then must we do to remain on course during a crisis? Let me share some lessons that I've learned from the story of Nehemiah. Number one, accurately and intentionally define what your cause is. Accurately and intentionally define what your cause is. Because why many of us are losing track? Why many of us are getting lost? It's because we don't know where we are going. We are on a journey without knowing what the destination is. The captain of a ship, as he sails through the waters, imagine if they didn't know what their destination, they, 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 are, they have not defined their journey. Somebody flying an airplane, a pilot, but he left the airport, but have not determined where they are going. But you tell me, Mister, that cannot happen. But that is how many people are living. You talk about their lives. They have, they, they have no direction. They have no destination. They have where they are going. Why was Nehemiah able to stay on course? He didn't what he was doing. I've been talking about life audit. And I'm working on something. And I hope all of you can join me when I, when I, when I will be speaking about life audits. I'll be organizing a seminar on that. And I'm working on something and a program. Because there are many people who have not accurately and intentionally defined what their cause is. What their cause is. And therefore, they will easily lose focus. Sometimes take a moment, take a pen and a paper, and list all the areas of focus in your life. They can be 8 to 10. List all the areas of focus in your life. Marriage. Um, investments. Career academic and knowledge acquisition think of all the areas maybe if you are a farmer farming if you are a, an engineer engineering if you are a list all those things and ask yourself what ought to be the direction for my parenting journey what ought to be the direction for my farming journey and then what ought to be the destination what is my predetermined destination that is what Nehemiah did the Bible says when the king asked him how much time do you need he went back and determined the time and came in and, and he told him and to show that he was very intentional about it he even knew how much wood he would require and he asked the king give me letters to Asaph the keeper of the king's forests that I may take these letters to him that he may give me supply me with wood he had defined accurately and intentionally what was required. When he got to Jerusalem, what was his first thing? Surveying the walls, going around and checking how, wh what gate is broken. He knew exactly what he was doing. Do you know exactly what you are doing? Do you know exactly what journey you are on? Do you know exactly where you are going? Do you know? fine-tune your understanding of your course and you can only do that by being intentional throughout the assignment that Nehemiah had he was very clear of all the details of the work that was to be done and he allocated every tribe every family work depending on his understanding of the work if he had not surveyed clearly he would not have been able to allocate that work he stayed in touch with his journey he was intentional he at every point of the journey he understood what needed to be done and how it needed to be done he was clear on what the cause was what the end product would look like do you know what the end product of your journey should look like yes you want to make an investment what investment any investment no be clear about the destination where do you want to take your children? You are a parent. What is the destination of your parenting journey? What do you want to see in your son 20, 30 years to come? What do you want to see your marriage looking like? 40, 50 years to come, God keeping you alive. Because if, if, if things are not defined, we will lose focus. We will lose focus. 
Stop living on earth as a person who is passing time and live on earth as a person who is on a mission. Because some of us have surrendered to fate and are just flowing with the currents, current. Accurately and intentionally define what your course is. You cannot remain on a course you have not defined. You cannot remain on a course you have not determined. You will lose focus. Everything that comes will keep you busy. You know like those people, you meet them and you tell them, Kuja unipereke kwa duka, wanaungana na we wana munaeda kwa duka. Mukirudi anakutana na muingine, anamuambia, come and take me to the river. They join that one going to the river. Why? Because they have not directed, they have not defined their cause. Please let us live life intentionally. Number two, define the required attention for your cause and pay it adequately. Define the required attention for your cause. Define the required attention because you must be able to calculate the cost of the cause that you're taking. Because many times people will start doing things without knowing exactly how much of my time is required, how much money is required, how much of my physical energy is required. What happens is that when we don't define the attention required, then when something else arises and we divert some attention there, we leave inadequate attention on the project that we are on. Many times we get into certain adventures without a clear understanding of our involvement and how much attention such adventures will require. Nehemiah would have thought if he had not known, he knew. Nehemiah knew that if I leave this location, if I leave the location of rebuilding the wall, these people will not do the work. The work will stop. Because he, if he did, didn't know, he would have said, okay, guys, please continue with the work. Let me rush to Ono see Tobiah and Sanballat, and then I will come back. But he knew that if I leave this place, if I don't give this place the attention that I should, then I am going to lose it. I'm going to, this war is going to stop. And therefore he knew I have to be here. Do you know how much of you is required in that project? So that you may not fail to give the due attention to your cause. Because when you don't give the due attention, you will not remain on cause. The work will stop. Whatever project you start, it's very important for you to calculate the cost, especially in, in terms of how much of me will be required. And I'm not saying this because I I'm, I'm, I'm so perfect. I've gotten myself into projects that if I had done some calculations before, I would not have gotten myself into. Why? Because I get into them and realize they require so much of my attention. So much of my attention that, sorry, uh, I have to restart for those on Zoom. Um, for those on Facebook, just hold on as we wait for you to um, join in. Yes, so they are in. So, I'm, I'm starting a project. I have not sat down. I have not calculated the level of effort required from me. And the moment I get into it, I, I lose it. And why do I lose it? Because it requires a lot of attention that I am not able to pay to. Define, define clearly the level of attention that is required so that you remain on course even during crisis. But more importantly, so that during crisis, I said a time of crisis is a time when critical decisions have to be made. It is a time when critical decisions have to be made. And if you have to make decisions in terms of where your attention is required, then you need to know how much attention is required. So define the required attention to your cause. And number two, still on the same, pay that attention adequately. Pay that, give that attention adequately. Don't allow yourself to be 
diverted. Don't allow yourself to be diverted. Projects many times fail because we have not intentionally determined the level of our involvement and thus we don't get involved as much. And no matter what crisis you are in, keep your eyes on your course. Even if you have to hold a weapon on one hand and ensure that you are working with the other, keep your eyes on your course. Number three, what you must do, number three, identify and save opportunities to advance your course presented by the crisis. Identify and seize, take advantage of, identify and seize opportunities to advance your cause. And these opportunities are presented by your crisis. You may ask me, Pastor, are you saying that in a crisis there could be opportunities? Exactly. That is what I am saying. That even in crisis, there are numerous opportunities that arise. But only those who are able to identify and seize such opportunities will be able to advance their course. We are going through a pandemic. Are there opportunities in this pandemic? A million opportunities. A million opportunities. There are scientists who are right now looking at this crisis and seeing it is time that I advance to the next level. There is somebody who will get their PhD thesis from this crisis. There is somebody who will get another doctorate through this crisis. There is somebody who have already started a business through this crisis. Why? Because opportunities to solve problems, opportunities to bring solutions are presented by crisis. And therefore, when you get a crisis, sometimes even as a, as a, as a, um, a parent, when your child gets into issues and you are called in, into school, don't so much concentrate on how bad that situation looks. Ask yourself, is there an opportunity for me to communicate a message here? When there is a conflict between you and somebody else, could it be even your neighbor or even your wife? It could be an opportunity to show love. It could be an opportunity to be compassionate. In a crisis, check what opportunities exist that I may be able to advance my course. Because every crisis presents opportunities with it. The challenge is opportunities during crisis are so hidden that they require very intentional effort, efforts to be identified. Opportunities during times of crisis are so hidden that they require very intentional efforts to be identified. They require somebody who is not grooming and crying and murmuring because of the proactive and arising and attentive to what may be a message and a voice in crisis. Because even in crisis, God speaks. Think of the crisis that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego got, them, got, got, got into. What opportunities were presented? Opportunities of displaying the powerful nature of their God. And what was their cause? Their God should be worshipped. And what came out? The king declared that the territories, the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego will be the only God to be worshipped. Even as a pastor, during such a time as now, I must be able to identify what opportunities God has presented to me. What opportunities God has presented to you. Seize those opportunities and advance, advance the course that God has given you. One thing that I've taught myself is not to complain during times of crisis, is not to murmur during times of crisis, but rather to seek what must, what opportunities have been presented and seize that opportunity. 
Because when you spend so much energy in being depressed because of the situation and the crisis you are in, if you spend so much energy in getting distressed, you'll have no energy to seize the opportunities that will response during times of crisis for you to stay on cause identify and make necessary adjustments to remain on cause identify and make necessary adjustments or what somebody like john c maxwell will call shifts make the necessary shifts so that you remain on cause a crisis has a reason make there will always be adjustments to be made Look at Nehemiah. He made very many adjustments. But one of the very pronounced adjustments that he made was to require that some people stay on guard as others work. But even those who are working, to with one hand hold a weapon and on the other hand hold the, the working instrument, the working tool. This was not something that Nehemiah had planned from the beginning. He had not anticipated that there will be a crisis. He had never anticipated that there are some people who will even plan to attack and fight them. He had never anticipated such things. And therefore, this may not have been on his blueprint. And it may not have been on his, the strategies that he had for his journey. But when the crisis arose, he had to very fast identify what was the required adjustment and make that adjustment. Brothers and sisters, there are many crises that arise in our lives. Those crises will require some adjustments to be made. And those adjustments have to be made because you cannot press the post button like we said. You can't press the post button. Number two, you cannot quit. Number three, you cannot allow your attention and efforts to be diverted. So what must you do? Adjust. Don't be rigid. You know, there are some people who will tell you that you should not be as rigid as somebody who have swallowed a, a, a kuroba, ire talibo. You know, don't be rigid. Adjust as necessary. Have you lost a job? And you to remain on course. Have your business gone down? Adjust so. Identify and make necessary adjustments. It happened in the life of Nehemiah. Things, crises, issues will arise. Let us not become rigid and refused to adjust with time. He had to make adjustments along the way. Like I've said, he had to get some people to start like fighters. And, and when these adjustments are being made, because I imagine if some of these foodies would have come and told them, no, everybody had to be flexible. Every member of the team, every stakeholder, Families, we have to make adjustments, but we have plans of where we are going because there is something that we need to do to remain on course. We have to make adjustments as a team player, as a member of the team, my brother and my sister. Be flexible enough. If, if, if your wife, if your husband, if your CEO, if your boss comes and tells you that. For their brethren. At some point, he had to call and encourage them. So be flexible. Be flexible. If in this season, your husband loses the job, and he comes and tells you, for us to remain, because we don't want to lose focus on a certain project that we had, maybe we have to use public classes for now and leave the vehicle because those necessary adjustments should be welcome and should be taken in. Don't be so rigid that you to remain on course.
time of crisis. Therefore, identify and make necessary adjustments. Ask yourself, what adjustments must I make to achieve my goals? Because I said two things are important to staying on course. Correct direction and the intended destination. <coughs> what happens here in between? Make required adjustments. But you must stay on the right direction. Yes, I was going, my vehicle has broken down, but I must remain on the correct direction to get to the determined or the desired destination. Make the necessary assessments. Let me share the last one because time is from much spent. Number five is ensure your trust in God is stable and unmoved. Ensure that your trust in God is number one, stable, and number two, unmoved by the crisis. One of the greatest sources of Nehemiah's strength was in his God. And when you read the book of Nehemiah throughout, you will see one time he had to strengthen the people in his God. Another time he had to seek his God for help. Another time he had to declare that the only reason why they had come, the Father had come, was because of their God. The audacity and the confidence he responded to his enemies with was born out of a trust in God. Was born out of his unshakable everyone in God. You lose trust in God and you cannot remain focused. When the words were complete, completed in 52 days, it was clearly written that the reason why the enemies were dismayed is because the, his God had let God remain if there is something that God. Anybody who must be dealt with because we must trust in God to remain on course. As I finish, my brothers and my sisters, I want to say this. Why must the work stop? That was the question that Nehemiah asked in the message chapter 6, verse 3. I sent messages to them saying, I'm doing a great work. And come down to you. That is my closing question to you. You are doing a great work of ministry. You are doing a great work of investing for yourself and your family. You are doing a great work of nurturing and building your family. You are doing a great work of improving yourself academically, of yourself in terms of your career. You are doing a great work. Like Nehemiah, why must that work stop as you pay and your attention to the crisis that has come in your life? Give that crisis attention, but not at the expense of the cost that God has set you on. Remain on course. We are saying, villagers getting our attention and efforts diverted. Let our attention and efforts remain on the course. Number two, either two, pressing the post button. Don't press the post button. Keep going. If there is something that you are doing before Corona, stop saying after Corona. The clock is still ticking. Keep going. And number three, don't quit. Quitting is not a solution. But how can you do this? Number one, ask
to pray for us and then we will uh, conclude.